if you want to know where I'm going. Oh, Lord, where I'm going. I'm going soon. Somebody asked me the other day, when trials come your way, how is it that you're walking around with a smile on your face? I tell them everything's okay, because I'm going to a better place. So if they ask you, tell them for me, I'm going beyond the I'm going up yonder. When this life's over, I'm gonna be with my Lord. Yeah, yeah, that's why I take the pain. pain. Yes, I can. I can even take the heartaches that it brings. I smile because I know one day I'll soon be gone. Say you can scandalize my name because one of these days God's gonna take his hand and wipe all of my tears away. No, I won't have to cry no more. I'll be living in my brand new home. If you miss me and I'm gone, just remember that I sang the song. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to shout troubles Come your way. How is that you're walking around with a smile on your face? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. 
Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up, and He will lift you up. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Hum yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up, and He will lift you up. So hum yourself in the sight of the Lord. You must humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and, and He will lift you up and He will lift you up and He will lift you up and He Lord God, as we begin our Bible study, Father, we, we, we pray for enlightenment. Uh, we, we pray that we all come away from here having learned more um, about you and your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the lesson that, that we, we heard, the sermon that was preached today, Father. And we, we, we just pray that we can continue uh, with this process of uh, educating the brethren so that uh, we will not be uninformed, Lord. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so just, just a brief re recap of the things that we, we looked at in this study as we are looking at Christian evidences. We look first of all at the, the, very, the various witnesses uh, to the fact that Jesus Christ is a real person. Uh, he actually lived, uh, walked this earth. Uh, he died. Uh, he was crucified and, and then he died and then he rose again. And the fact that he rose again uh, is the basis upon which the church was built. Um, the Christian religion, as, as we, we said, er, um, what, what was it, about three weeks ago, is not based on an idea. It's not based on uh, some partic particular uh, religious kind of belief. It is based on the person of Jesus Christ, on him. And, and that is what we want to impress every single week. And that is why, when, you know, when, when, you're, when you're baptized, you are baptized into Christ. You're not baptized into a religious body. You're, you're baptized into Christ. And when you're baptized into Christ, you become one of his body. That is why we, we don't, we, we say, for instance, our meeting place is the church building. But the church building is not the church. You know, people pass outside on the road, they say, oh, that, that's the, the, the church of Christ. We are, that are inside here are the church. The church meets here. Amen. All of that is because it is based upon the person, the personhood of Jesus Christ. So we looked at the empty tomb, the evidence that uh, he wasn't there on the third day. 
all right? And now we're going to look at the implications of that third day this morning. So on the third day, the disciples were in mourning because of the events that preceded it. And what are the events that preceded it? The death and the burial of Jesus Christ. The one in whom they had so much hope uh, was now dead. And the last day they saw of him was that um, he, was, he was buried. He was in a tomb. Now, you and I know that usually when we Someone dies and we, you know, we have a funeral service for them and they're taken to the cemetery. Uh, that person <clears throat> is either placed underground or placed in a mausoleum or, or whatever, the, the body of the person. And then everybody leaves and that's it. All right? So... It is no wonder then that the disciples would be feeling this way. And for us to recognize what was happening is, and the point that we want to emphasize, is that the disciples, in Jesus' case, did not believe that he was raised. They did not believe that he was resurrected. Let us turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and we want to look at verses uh, 21 to 24. So they were in disbelief. Luke chapter 24, verses 21 to 24. And the scripture says, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel indeed. Be, in, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. And they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But him, they did not see. They were disappointed, and they were, uh, that they had not seen Jesus. But yet, they felt that he was not raised. On, on the third day, what we are talking about here in this particular passage, in chapter 24, is remember the, the, the two that went to, um, uh, they were on the road to Emmaus. And so we want, we want to look a little further back from uh, where I just read. And somebody read verses 13 to 12, verses uh, 15 to 17. Now, before you read, there were these uh, two, of, two of Jesus' disciples. They were traveling. They were going to Emmaus, right, from Jerusalem. And <clears throat> we are told that Emmaus was seven miles from Jerusalem. They walked together, and they talked about all the events that had just happened. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was just three days ago, or this was the third day right. we're talking about. Okay, so in verses 15 through 17, what, what, what's happening there? Read. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus mm -hmm. himself approached and began traveling with them, mm -hmm. but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you were walking? And they stood still, looking sad. Okay, so we understood that they were sad. Jesus joins them, 
uh, although they were prevented from recognizing him. And he asked them, well, what's going on? What, what, why, why the sad looks? And one of them, Cleopas, says in verse 18, wait, ha have you been living on a rock all these days? <laughs> I know, I, I'm just putting it in uh, modern terms. Because everybody knew in Jerusalem what had happened. But here is this man asking them, well, wh what's going on? Why, why are you sad? And so then Jesus asked them again, he says, what things are you talking about? So somebody read verses 19 through 24 for me. And he, and he said to them, mm -hmm. what things? And they said to him, the things about Jesus, the Nazarene, mm -hmm. who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. Hmm. Okay, do you want me to Move on to verse 24. Okay. Uh, uh, 24? Continue, sorry, to verse okay. 24. But also some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came saying, that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the woman also had said. But him they did not see. Okay, so these, thank you. So these two disciples traveling to Emmaus, Jesus joins them, asks them uh, what had happened, what's going on, why are they so sad. And they shared the hopes that, you know, Christ would have been the Messiah that they were looking for. That they were sure that he was the Messiah, but their hopes had been dashed. They even doubted the, 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 the women that, uh, the, the fact that they heard that the women had gone to the tomb and seen the tomb empty. So, it, it didn't compute with them that if it's empty, he said he would raise on the third day. But uh, it, isn't it like any of us? We, we, we can't, we might say, well, they should have known on the third day. When, when the, the report came in that the tomb was open and empty. But isn't it like us today? And a lot of us are skeptical of lots of things that, that, uh, that we read, even in the scriptures, even today. And so <clears throat> they felt that what they had hoped for would be dashed. Look, when uh, I, I think in part it is because of the expectation of the Jews, because we're talking about Jews here. Gentiles had, the, the church had not been established as yet, and Gentiles were not in the church. So we're talking about Jews. Remember, Jesus had said that, that um, everything would begin in Jerusalem, beginning at Jerusalem, Amen. all right? Um, later on, when, when, when Peter preaches the sermon, he's going to remind them of these things. But they're Jews, and the Jews thought, that the Messiah would come riding on a white horse and you know, all victorious and so on. So if, if Jesus was raised, they, they, they would have been a, he probably would have been bringing a big army, defeat the Romans because they were under Roman rule, and then the Jews would reign forever under, under the Lord. But it was not so. 
Again, they didn't understand the nature of the kingdom that was about to be shown to them 40 days later. So, <clears throat> Jesus then, in verses 25 through 27, he reprimands them for their unbelief. Here's what he says. He said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart, to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? When we read, I, I for one was not a big fan of the Old Testament at first because, you know, I grew up on not knowing much about the scriptures. And when I did know something about, when I began to really learn about the scriptures, uh, I learned about the New Testament because, you know, it was a preacher from the Church of Christ that uh, con uh, through him I was converted. So I liked the New Testament and I had to come to love the Old Testament. One of the things that we need to understand is that the Old Testament talks about Jesus. Every single thing about his life and what he was going to do and so on was about Jesus. All, all the, the prophets that came before, all events that came before, certain events that happened in the Old Testament, it was all foretelling about what the Messiah would do. When, when we talk about the Messiah in the, in the Psalms and so on, it's talking about Jesus. He was the one to come. But the Jews had this idea that the Messiah was going, when the Messiah came, man, he was going to, you know, like, like the, uh, the Psalms talk about leveling the, 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 the hills and doing all, he, he was going to do all of that and everything will, the Jews will have authority over everything and everybody. But it was not so. So Jesus reprimands them for their unbelief. And the scripture says in verse 27, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scripture, in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The whole gospel is, you, you, you can teach the gospel from the Old Testament. Now, that's one thing that I didn't know many, many years ago. <laughs> so I just focus on the New Testament. Amen. <laughs> now, Mark, on the other hand, tells us that the disciples didn't believe the women's report. And in Mark chapter 16, Mark 16, Verses 9 through 11, if someone would read that for me. You want to see what happened there in Mark 16, verses 9 through 11. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he mm -hmm. appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had, sent, he had cast seven demons, she went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Hmm. I wonder why they didn't believe. There, there, there are a couple of things that is happening here also. But one of them I'm going to place uh, some, just, just spend a little time on, is that the position of women in those days, um, women were kind of low on the totem pole of society. And as a matter of fact, among the Jews, what, what they said is, you know, if the man who 
begets a son, you know, everything is good. A uh, man who begets a daughter will then woe to him. But that was, that was their idea at the, at the time. Uh, women were not relied on as witnesses. If there was a trial, if, if something happened, they, they, they did not give credence to the witness of a woman. But Jesus is going to change all that, you know. So when the women went to the tomb and reported back to the disciples, the scripture says they did not do what? They didn't believe them. What we see here, too, is that God chose the same people that were low on the totem pole to bring the news of his resurrection. And that's why Jesus, in his ministry also, would go to like, he's, he's going to Samaria. He's going through Samaria. He talks to the woman at the well. Him being a Jew, she, and, she of herself said, well, you, you're a Jew, how come you, you, you talking with me? Because that was the position of women. But Jesus came and changed all that. So... <clears throat> They did not believe the disciples, the rest of the disciples, we're talking about the rest of the disciples, they didn't believe uh, that he had risen at first. But then <clears throat> that sets the stage for what's coming next. From unbelief for, or disbelief to belief. We read that there are many sightings of Jesus. If you, you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 8. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 1 through 8. And somebody read that, please. Uh, many sightings of Jesus by various people after he was resurrected, after his resurrection uh, for 40 days. And that's, you know, if, if, if somebody, let's say on the third day said, oh, we saw Jesus, they might, someone else might say, well, you know, you just, like we said last week, hallucinating. <laughs> Or you might think that you saw him, but that didn't happen, all right? But if a series of people saw him for 40 days after his resurrection, well, then we, 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 we necessarily have to come to the conclusion that he was risen. So let's read the scripture and see what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, first eight verses. Moreover, brethren... I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Mm. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was seen by Cephas and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born, out of due time. Okay. So you get the sense that a lot of people saw him. <laughs> Don't you? A lot of people saw him 
after his resurrection. All these people can't be wrong. We are told that Peter saw him, uh, uh, Paul in his account says, he was seen by Peter or Cephas, and then by the twelve, all of them together. And after that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, at the same time. See, I, I told you earlier that uh, Werner von Braun, a uh, German rocket scientist, had said he converted, he, he was not a Christian, but he, he, well, he didn't become a Christian as we know it, but he became a believer in Christ. Uh, let me just put it that way. But he, he said that as a scientist, he, has, he, he, he cannot help but conclude that Jesus indeed was resurrected because the witness of five, more than 500 people makes it a solid thing. All right? So, Paul in, in his account says that he was seen by over 500 people. And the, the, the kicker is that at the time that Paul was writing the, to the Corinthians, there were people who had seen Jesus alive who were still alive that day, on that day. So, the power of the evidence is that if you doubted that Jesus was resurrected, all you had to do was ask one of those people. And they would say, yes, I saw it. If you doubt 9-11-2001, the events of that particular day, and everybody remembers where they were on 9-11-2001, uh, all you had to do is ask somebody who was alive on that day. Everybody remembers where they were. <laughs> I remember I was in the church office, and I, w I was doing some things, and my, my son called me and said, Dad, turn on the TV. <clears throat> turn on the TV and saw the smoke billowing from the first tower and then saw the second, the, the plane crash into the second one. And, you know, after that, it, it was TV all day. <laughs> as sad as it was, saw people jumping out off of the buildings, all of that. So to tell me that 9-11, 2001 did not occur, I tell you, you're crazy. Go visit the, the site where the buildings were and are no longer there. So when over 500 people saw Jesus, the risen Christ, we know and, and could give evidence that he indeed was risen. We know that it's a fact. And then Paul says, and last of all, as the one untimely born, because remember who Saul, uh, uh, Paul was. He was Saul, the one who persecuted the church. He used to arrest people, have people killed because they were Christians. But Saul renamed Paul is now given evidence that Jesus appeared to him. Remember he, he, Remember, uh, um, Saul was going to persecute more Christians? And he saw Jesus himself and was blinded by the sight. Remember, uh, Brother Davis talked about uh, Jesus' transfiguration in, in, in the sermon and how his robes and everything was just bright as light. Why? Because he is light. Remember, he said, I'm the light of the world. And so, 
Paul saw in the midday sun, he saw a light brighter than the midday sun and was blinded by it. Jesus spoke to him. The same Jesus that was resurrected from the dead. All right? Yes. I just wanted to add on to what you were saying about 9-11. I mm. hear that a lot of people are saying that the Holocaust didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And with saying that and having people who are still alive who were a part of it, and as Christians, we should know that there's going to be people who do not believe, even though there's evidence. Yeah. Yeah. There's still going to be people who don't believe with all the books, all the movies, yeah. everything that people are saying, um, and, and, and even their kids are saying that it did exist. Um, so we should just be mindful of that, that we shouldn't be deterred because of that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and where the Holocaust is concerned, we all, all, um, me and my wife and, and daughter, we, we could attest to that fact because we actually visited Dachau, one of the places where lots of Jews were, were, were killed. And not just Jews, but also some Christians yeah. also were killed in, in those ovens. We, 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 we saw... As a matter of fact, as, as uh, we were going through that particular um, death camp, I mean, there, was, there was a moment when I just had to walk outside and sit on a bench outside because it, is, it, it, it began to overwhelm me to see man's inhumanity to man. Yes, go ahead. Um, my question is, Jesus came way after the Greek philosophers. And um, we see in universities, in schools, they teach a lot about the, those philosophers. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came after, mm -hmm. but yet, we believe those philosophers that came before him, but how come we just have a blackout in the period of Jesus, and then we can remember what happened after, too. Very good uh, question. Now, where the, the many philosophers are uh, concerned, uh, there is very little evidence, not only for, there, while there is evidence for some that it, it did exist and so on, but there is very little evidence that some of their thoughts are really are mature, are already uh, uh, fitting for us today. Um, it would take too long to go through the various things that they taught, but some, some thought that, uh, you know, that there was no life beyond this life. And really, it, it, it was, uh, um, their philosophy was, was one of uh, hopelessness and despair for some of them. But I remember one person saying that all these, these men taught for many, many years. Yet, they did not have the impact of a lowly carpenter. Who, was, who taught for three years, or three and a half years, depending on, on what, and the impact that he has had on everything and everybody since then has far outweighed anything that the Greek philosophers have said, or the Roman philosophers, or the Jewish philosophers, as a matter of fact. Three and a half years. And yet he is remembered today. The Bible is, is, is the sold out book each and every single year. And so the impact that he has had on us and on the world has been because, and this is what we're going to be getting to, let me see, what's the time now? Oh, we, we are... Oh, we, we, we have some time. This is what we're going to be getting to, that um, 
he has changed the world as we know it. Even we, we, we begin to talk about, or we used to talk about uh, AD, Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. Now it's the Christian era, right? CE, Christian era. It's because of him. And it's because of the resurrection. The most powerful, the most uh, potent event that occurred in the world was the resurrection of Jesus Christ because it was different from the philosophers of old who thought that uh, you, you died now and that was it. He showed us that there is life after death. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, I was reading just yesterday, and, and, and I, I did put uh, something out on, on uh, Facebook that says that um, basically what the resurrection shows is that when you think that you have seen the worst. You just wait. Because there is better after that. I'm just, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. Why? Because there was a third day. There was a tomb that was open and empty. There were grave clothes that were missing the body. And there were appearances of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after the third day. Yeah, yes, you, you had, Jackie, you, you had your hand up at some point? Okay, you know. Oh, you did, okay, go ahead. Right. <laughs> I was just thinking um, with you, Sister Nova, on like, if, how, how are we just this one event, not one event, but this like singular event above all, there's so much global skepticism and resistance. And I um, sort of had seen like a theme between like what Shav even said and the, the slides on disbelief, that the disciples were in disbelief, but also they were grieving. And if someone came up to us and were like someone that we loved very deeply and had just buried, and they're like, they're alive, like, I'm trying to get over the fact that they're not here anymore and you're telling me that they are and that just really <laughs> interrupts the grieving process. And mm. so, I, yes, we can talk about like, oh, how faithless, but also like they're human and we are emotional beings and they were trying to cope with the loss of a loved one. And so thinking about like the emotional implications of the gospel for people throughout time and today if people believe that Christ is real and that Christianity is a thing and that God is Lord of their life, there are some things in their life that they love that they would have to let go. And there's, some, there's like a resistance to wanting to grieve the loss of those things in them that would have to be sacrificed to giving your life to God. And so I think there's a level of grace and an understanding that as Christians, when we're evangelizing, we have to have, because we know what we've had to sacrifice and how hard it was for us. And so that's just part of not, not taking it personally when we're like, how could you not believe? Like on one hand, yes, how could you not? But then also understanding it's because of a resistance to grieve the things they would have to sacrifice if they did believe this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's somebody else? Yeah, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. So, not, not, not only um, was the fact that, ma that many saw him after his resurrection prove that he was indeed risen from the dead, but it also was proof that he is the Son of God. Now, how do we prove that he is son how did he prove that he was the Son of God? Well, first of all, that Jesus prophesied that he would rise on the third day after his crucifixion. He didn't just say that he would die. He specified that he would die by crucifixion. Anyone, any one of us here know exactly how we're going to die? I mean, many of us would like to know. 
but do we know exactly how we're going to die? I, I know what I would like, to, how, how I would like to die, <laughs> but I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. Okay? In Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 20, verses 18 and 19. Maybe somebody would read that and then uh, I'll call out some other scriptures. John 3, 14, John 8, 28, and John 12, 32 to 33. Matthew 20, 18 and 19, John 3, 14, John 8, 28, and John 12, 32 and 33. So let's begin with Matthew 20, 18 and 19. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge him and to crucify, and the third day he will rise again. All right. Now remember, he's foretelling what's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. But he's saying, this is what is going to happen to me. And you wonder how the disciples felt when he said these things. Remember, um, Peter, the one who likes to speak first and then think about what he says afterwards. <laughs> Not so, Lord. <laughs> in in uh, John chapter 3 and verse 14, says what? Who has John 3, 14? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So what was Jesus talking about? Remember in the Old Testament? Uh, he, he, was, he was talking about this crucifixion, right? But the event in the Old Testament was what? Um, there were these serpents, all right? If they, if they, they, they bit you, you could die unless you looked on, all right, on that staff. Uh, I think the medical people use that same uh, symbol, all right? You, you look upon it, and, and you'll be saved, all right? In the same way, you look upon Jesus, and you'll be saved. In... John 8 and 28. John 8, 28. He's speaking in the same vein here. Okay. Then Jesus said to, to... Anybody has it? If you don't have it, I'll read it. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. When you lift up the Son of Man, he's talking about his cross. All right? And then John 12, verses 32 and 33. Somebody has that? John 12, verses 32 and 33. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. All right. So, definitely. Jesus was definite about the manner of his death. It was going to be by crucifixion. It was going to be by hanging. It wasn't going to be by strangulation. It, it wasn't going to be by any of those things, but by crucifixion. Secondly, Jesus made this prophecy early in his ministry. And in John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22, 
he, he is, uh, we, we, we won't read the, the, the full thing, but he essentially says in verse 19, he says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They thought that he was talking about the temple in Jerusalem, this big physical thing. But he was talking about the temple of his body. You destroy it, in three days I, I, not somebody, you know, not, not one of you or, or a group of people doing it, but he says, I will raise it up. And in there, the implication here is his Godship. Uh, as, as, as a son of God, only God could do stuff like that. Okay? Yes, go ahead. I think the interesting thing about, like, Jesus predicting how he was going to die exactly. is, like, He's basically telling his disciples, I'm going to die a public death. Because crucifixion was something that if you get crucified, everyone who passes by was going to see it, and they're going to see king of the Jews and all. So he's basically saying, like, not only am I going to like be killed, but I'm going to die a, a public it's death. Gonna so public. everybody's going to know that I died, and everybody's going to know which in the way that I died. So when, I cru when I'm crucified, it's going to be a big wow. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think that, that that's also a credence to what you're saying in terms of um, how, how strong our belief ought to be, knowing that he, he went underwent this. Yeah, and, and it was a shameful kind of death, too. It was public, and it was shameful. In, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 through 40, Jesus also references the experience of Jonah. Remember, Jonah was in the belly of the fish, it wasn't a wheel. It was a fish that God prepared. Now, we, we, we don't know if, if he, he converted a wheel or what. But we, we have to go with what the Bible says, right? right? The Bible never mentions a wheel, all right? So it was a fish. He was in the belly of the fish for three days. Uh, um, I remember a, a Christian comic saying that Jonah was the first submar submariner because he, he, he was on, on the sea for three days and three, three nights. Uh, and so <clears throat> Jesus referred to this also as uh, a sign of himself being resurrected, being, uh, uh, in, in a sense, buried under the sea, and resurrected again to life. But not only that, uh, he, he made this promise, here, uh, promise early in his ministry, but it, it became common knowledge. The, Jew, the Jewish rulers knew about the prophecy. And so in, that's why in Matthew 27, verses 62 and 63, they said this. Matthew 27, verses 62 and 63, we read, On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how this deceiver said, After three days I will rise. So the Jewish rulers knew. And they clearly did not expect a resurrection. They wanted the body of Jesus to still be in the tomb on the third day. Why? So they could display the body, as we said last week, and say, look, see this man is no Messiah. Here's his body. He is a, he's a fraud. But that didn't happen, did it? No, it didn't happen. So that proves then that he's the son of God because only God can do what Jesus did. Amen. Only God. Man can't do it. Man can, you know, fake being dead and, and being uh, resurrected. They can fake it, but it ain't real. I know in some cultures they... they, they um, would if if you if you grind that poisonous 
um, part of the puffer fish. And you inhale, because you know if, if a puffer fish is good eating, but if you don't have the right chef to uh, uh, clean out that, that poisonous gland, you could die. All right? And what they found is that um, it can slow your heart rate down. So low that people think that you're, you're dead. All right? And, but that's what charlatans do. This was real death. All right? So what does the re resurrection of Jesus... Yes, go ahead. I was just listening, and then I realized that the folks who were there, um, the resur resurrecting Lazarus, mm -hmm. should have given those persons that preparation of mind that, look, if Jesus can raise Lazarus, then surely his power over life and death should have been established. Yeah. So it should have been, and I know, but it should have been easier to accept that, hey, if he can raise Lazarus, obviously. Yeah, that, that's one good thing about the Bible that, uh, that, that I just love. It tells us about who we are, right? Because that's how we are today. We, we, the same kind of people. We might see something happen here, and we feel that um, it can't happen anywhere else. You know? So, yeah, so you, you would think that the raising of Lazarus would cause some of them, at least, to believe that Jesus could be raised from the, from the dead. Because he rose, he called Lazarus out from the dead. He called him back from the dead. All right. So all these people that, that, that have these fake um, resurrections and so on uh, should just go to the... Uh, uh, burial grounds and so on and, and just raise everybody. But they can't do that. Jesus is the only person who could have done that. And notice too that uh, when you remember when he died that there were people who were brought back to life, were resurrected, and, and they, they were reunited with their families. Guess who those people were? Not Christians, because the church had not but those who were faithful, Jews, people who were faithful. Uh, uh, and so they were the ones that were resurrected. All right? All right, so very quickly, we, we went up, because we are almost out of time. I would say we are out of time right now. But we're going to be looking at the... Uh, what happened, the change that happened with the disciples uh, um, at Pentecost. That's 40 days later on. But on the first day of the week, we want to see, first of all, that from the day of Pentecost, the first day of the week has been special to Christians. Jesus rose on the first day. Sunday, a day like today. And from that time on, it has been special to Christians. The church was established on the first day of the week. In Acts chapter 2, church established on the first day of the week. I wonder why. Wasn't any other day. We see the Corinthian church is taught to pick up this special collection. When? On the first day of the week. Why? Because that's the time that they gathered together to worship God. And then we see them observing the Lord's Supper on that particular day. Again, because that's the day that they were commanded to come together to worship God. There's a lot that could be said about all that. And, and the, the instinct in, in me is, is to kind of expound on it, <laughs> but I know I can't because I, there's, there's a time constraint. But... The fact is that the first day of the week, as we remember it, 
should be important. It, it should impel us to come out of our homes. And th those, those of us that are online and, and listening and streaming and so on, if nothing else, the first day of the week should be that particular time that you set aside your fears and come out and assemble as God decreed that we should assemble together in order that we worship him. Yes, Matthew. I also found that there are also special observances in the Old Testament for the first day of the week mm -hmm. as God spoke about the different feasts and festivals. I just thought, you know, because you said earlier that um, the, 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 we could teach from the Old Testament um, about Christ and also that it's one book about Jesus Christ, the entire Bible. So I, I just dropping in there that there are also special observances for the first day of the week also from right. the Old Testament okay. in relation to the feast and, and, and the stuff. Yeah, and in closing, uh, notice how the prominence is transferred from the Sabbath day to the first day of the week. And, the, and this is significant when you realize that uh, devout Jews who were accustomed to keeping the Sabbath and who had become Christians never questioned the correctness of this emphasis. They never questioned it. So what happened to produce that kind of change? I submit to you that it was the greatest supernatural event man had ever experienced, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And with that, we, we close this morning. Uh, and let's just have a short prayer. Father God, we, we, we thank you, dear God, that you, you have given us all the evidence that we need, Father, to worship you and to um, be assured in our, in our minds, Father, that your Son will come one day, will return one day to take us back to be with you and, and with him and where we'll be worshiping you forever with the angels, Father. We thank you for this hope. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.